First off, the attacks in Paris are horrendous. I can't imagine how horrific it must have been to have been caught up in that. It's truly outrageous. We don't know who's responsible for them yet, but let's be honest, it's more than likely ISIS, in retaliation for France's foreign policy. The French recently bombed oil infrastructure only last week, and have recently destroyed ISIS training camps. So it looks like ISIS have retaliated against Russia with the bringing down of the passenger flight a couple of weeks ago, and now they've hit France. They've hit Paris again. Is this a false flag operation, as some have suggested? I don't know. It's too early to say. At the moment, I don't have any idea. But what I want to get across to people is that if we, actually, I say we, but I really mean our politicians that are supposed to represent us, so if they vote to bomb ISIS in Syria, we in the UK will be looking at attacks like the one that's just happened in Paris, in London and other UK cities. And when it happens, the blame will be laid squarely at the government's door. But sadly, following the Paris attack, the UK politicians are now even more likely to vote for attacking Syria. Because our MPs, let's be honest, aren't particularly bright and can be easily manipulated. So this attack has made it easier for David Cameron to get the votes he needs to bomb ISIS in Syria. Resulting in our own politicians quickening an attack on the UK which will kill innocent people. Notice how when there is an ISIS attack, no one in power ever gets hurt. You would have thought that if ISIS really wanted to hurt a country, you'd thought that they'd take out the head, wouldn't you? But no, it's always innocent people watching bands or out for dinner, always these soft targets that get killed. Have we forgotten that ISIS threatened back in February of this year to send half a million migrants to Europe? How many of them have arrived already? And as Angela Merkel comes under pressure for flooding her country with immigrants, France closes its borders. But don't think that more bombing in Syria will solve anything. If the UK get involved, they will hardly be going after ISIS. They want to remove Assad. The UK will mainly be bombing Assad forces who are fighting ISIS on the ground. The UK will be working with Al-Qaeda and working with ISIS to get Assad under the pretext to get ISIS. All this will provoke ISIS into attacking us at home. Obama, the single biggest terrorist on the planet whose global mass murder campaign still hasn't brought about peace, has said that he will do all he can to help. Well, I suggest we start lobbying our MPs to ask them to put pressure on Obama and David Cameron to stop funding, stop arming and stop training ISIS. That would be a good start. We have a situation now where Russia, Iraq and Iran are fighting ISIS. The UK, US, Saudi Arabia, France and NATO are all supporting ISIS. France even admitted that they've been delivering arms to the Syrian rebels. Those rebels happen to be Al-Qaeda and ISIS. So Hollande has been arming the very terrorists that hit Paris last night. This madness simply has to stop. But surely now, with ISIS threatening to send half a million people to Europe, running around to attack us, and with what happened in Paris last January, when the Charlie Hebdo offices were attacked, and again the most recent Paris attack that's claimed well over 140 lives, and with Cameron looking like he's going to get his way eventually to bomb Syria, causing attacks in the UK, surely, surely now we need to have a grown-up debate about whether we need to arm our citizens again. I have this argument with my wife all the time. She doesn't believe in guns. She doesn't want to see more guns. But had there been concealed carriers in Paris, I bet the death toll wouldn't have reached 20. Criminals will get guns, regardless. Criminals 
do not follow gun laws. So if there are madmen running around wanting to kill us all, sensible people should be able to have concealed carry guns to protect themselves and others.